going on, everyone? Welcome back to Sideline NBA Edition. We're here every Wednesday at noon to break down, discuss the current state of the NBA. I'm your host, Matt Sampson. Before we get going, remember, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. I'm joined by T today. T, what's going on? How are we doing? Rockets fired their head coach. Oh, yeah, Paul uh, Silas. He's gone. A little happy about that. I was going to say well, he... Paul, so Paul was actually his dad. Okay. And Paul actually passed away. Oh, rest in peace. Middle of the season. Oh, jeez. So... I think that's part of the reason they, they hung on to him until the end of the season. It's a but, tough year. You know, let him finish out the, the season. Well, T, they did let him finish out the season. Season's over now. The yep. regular season's over. And so that's why this episode, we're just going to kind of run through. Um, it's like a season recap, kind of reflect on everything that's happened. And uh, right before the playoffs get going. So with that said, T, I'll ask you, a lot of surprises this season. A lot of teams played well. Um, we might have not expected. What was the most surprising team to you, if you had to choose? Uh, I mean, I would say obviously the Kings. Yeah, I think that's the obvious answer. I think the <laughs> Kings are the obvious answer. Um, the Kings are basically what the Mavs wanted to be. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the only difference is they have Sabonis, so I guess they have a better interior big. But they score 150 a night, and the other teams can't score 150 a night. And that's going to be their their way of playing, and we'll see how it goes in the playoffs because they don't have a lot of experience. It's kind of crazy because bef- they hadn't made the playoffs since, I think, 06. They had the longest drought yeah. in the entire league, um, and no one thought they'd make the playoffs. They were like the Jets of the NBA. Liter- literally. I mean, could you think of a more relevant franchise in Sacramento? <laughs> and, like, no one thought they'd make the playoffs, and they are a fucking three seed. They, like, they've played really good basketball. Yeah. Now, they might have a tough first-round matchup, uh, I think they play Golden State. Yep. Which is t- – but, dude, if they beat Golden State – I mean, they that's could this definitely, could be the start of something. You that's going to be 300 points combined. Yeah. No, that's, that's going to be, be <laughs> a heck of a high-scoring game. After the Warriors, what, they dropped 55 yeah, yesterday oh, dude, against like the Blazers? 155, yeah. No, that's going to be a uh, high-scoring series. But I'm excited to watch that one. Kind of like the, the young, like the next upcoming stars and then like the Warriors that like kind of are on their last. We got, we got Katie you know, and Russ, too. That's another good one. We'll um, get to that later. We'll get to that. So they were the most surprising. I agree. Who was the most disappointing team, in your opinion? Miss, most disappointing? For me, personally, uh, it was the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. I just think last year they made Game 7. Uh, excuse me. They made uh, the Western Conference Finals. They got smoked by Golden State. But they made the Conference Finals. And they bring back a similar group. And they add... Kyrie Irving, I think when they added him, they were like the five, six seed. Mm-hmm. Four, they were like they were the four seed. Four seed in that middle range. They add in Hall of Famer, all NBA talent, and they don't even make the – to me, it's a fucking joke what happened in Dallas. Yeah, I, they're going to have a hell of an offseason. There's definitely going to be changes. Mm-hmm. Another team who I want to just yeah. throw as a, as a disappointment, I think the Heat were. Oh, huge Obviously disappointment. Obviously, they have a chance to redeem themselves right now, yeah. but – I think just with Lowry being a shade of himself, Oladipo being not what they expected, and Duncan Robinson like becoming just falling flat on the off the earth, basically. Well, dude, Miami they made Game Seven of the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, and now they they're in the playing tournament. Yeah, it's crazy. Like they might they could if they lose to Atlanta, you know what I mean? They, they could. It's great. Like three years ago, they were in the finals. It yeah. seems like they've just. Been slowly getting older and older and older, despite Bam being Bam and Hero being I was gonna say, two young players. Other than those two guys, I feel like they really mismanaged the roster, like you said. Yeah, they have a bunch of old guys, kind of undrafted guys who are like nice role players, but you know when they need to play more minutes, they're not as good. You know what I mean? Yeah. They gave Robinson that big contract. It's you're right. It's just kind of Bam and Hero, the only young elite guys they have. So Miami definitely a disappointing team. Dallas maybe the most disappointing. Um. On a more positive note, what was your favorite or you think best free agent signing or trade this season? Um, There's a lot well, of them. I'll K- take this back to the off season, and mm-hmm. we'll, I guess we'll ride the Kings this video, but it's the yeah. Halliburton Sabonis that was a trade. Ev- that was a pretty even trade. I think the Kings might have actually won. Yeah, I think, well, originally everyone thought, you know, the P- the Pacers stole him. People were, were shitting like, the Kings they for They were trade. shitting on the Kings mm-hmm. because they were like, oh, wow, they just gave away another all- potential all-star guard. And so, mm-hmm. No, I agree with that, dude. That was um that was definitely a good move for them. I think you could, if we're going back to the offseason, the Donovan Mitchell trade. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
That was a steal for Cleveland. Um, I think the Kevin Durant trade midseason for Phoenix. Mm-hmm. I mean, they what have they lost? Like, have they lost a game with Durant playing in the no, lineup? No, they're undefeated. I mean, that's insane. I think an underrated move, maybe free agent signing. Those were all trades. The Jalen Brunson signing for the yeah, Knicks. That's one team went like this. The Knicks went up, and the Mavericks went down. And and Lucas having nightmares about him. Right? Literally, they asked him. He goes, "I fucking miss him." Yeah. And a lot of people didn't know, like, oh, if you give him that money, like, how's he going to do? He's performed great. He probably should have been an all-star this year. Yeah. I mean, props to the Knicks, uh, Leon Rhodes, for actually going out. A lot of people shit on him for actually going out and making a good signing. They could have a big summer coming, too, unfortunately. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, a Knicks team to keep an eye on. You know, big market. You know, it looks like they finally get going, and thanks to Jalen Brunson. I did see that the Lakers also signed Tristan Thompson yesterday. Yeah. So... That's more of a LeBron, you know, LeBron's he's been just like, oh, let me bring my boy back. I was going to say, he's been riding LeBron, dude. This, Let's get like, you off ESPN for a little bit. No, every time he's on ESPN, he rides LeBron. <laughs> he's like, I'm available. You know, Wasi's always like reminiscing about the uh, 2016 Cavs. Yeah. And it just shows if you like suck LeBron's dick enough, like he'll bring you back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Le GM. Yeah, seriously. Um, But yeah, agree. A free agent signing. Good one there. Your favorite storyline, T. Now, this doesn't have to be anything uh, specific. It could be John Morant. Maybe you like some chaos in the league. Uh, everything Durant, Kyrie, the Celtics. You, it, was there something this season that stood out to you that you enjoyed? Uh, Honestly, it, it, it happened last night, okay. and, it, and it was the T-Wolves. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's get they, into cause, this. Cause right they into this. literally just they imploded. fucking fell apart in the matter of a game. Right before our eyes. Literally, right before the playoffs. I, I think it's hilarious how people are like, oh, my God, what did Rudy Gobert? He punched his teammate. First off, that was like yeah, a was very a like a closed hand slap. Like yeah. that wasn't a punch, and mm-hmm. you punched him in the shoulder. And these guys are fucking grown ass men yeah. in the NBA. I don't think that should be a big yeah. deal. I don't think he's going to get suspended. I think he'll play their play well, in game. Well, I think they announced their suspend. I just got an update a little early. I think the T Wolves, not the NBA, the T Wolves are suspending Gobert for the play in game. Yeah. Oh well. So. So, so not but, the NBA. So you're right. It wasn't enough to get a league. But, like, the T-Wolves are, like, he's such an asshole, like, sit, you know, sit home. Yeah, but literally I think just the T-Wolves in general have become my favorite storyline because they gave up their future for this guy. He sucks. Four first-round picks. He's soft as hell. You know why? He's actually became the most overrated player in the league. All the fucking French guys are soft. How did this guy actually, how did people actually let him win three defensive players? This guy's a fucking joke. I mean, have you ever met a softer defensive player of the year? The fucking, you never count on the French. They'll always screw you over. Absolutely. Four first-round picks for a Frenchman. Terrible idea. No, I agree, dude. Fucking, what are they doing? They're worse with him, like, on the team. Exactly. Like, Cat's supposed to be the center. He doesn't. He doesn't play defense. No, so. he's soft too. Uh, the only I think Anthony Edwards is a hooper. Then that's what that's what that's keeps it. me entertained. entertained with the T Wolves because he'll drop thirty five and look yeah. like Jordan. Honestly, dude, and they have so many young, so much young talent. They've had so many high draft picks, and they blow four first round picks on Gobert. It's just that's just a joke. Yeah, and they trade D away, another good young player. This ha- not to mention the Jaden McDaniels incident. You oh, he punched this? his hand, broke it. Oh, it's a fucking joke in Minnesota. Yeah, so. So, yeah, they're screwed. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they lost to the Lakers. But it's a shame because that's a team that should be doing what the Grizzlies and Kings are doing. Yeah, they should be at the top. And yep. instead, they could be sitting home come postseason time. I yeah, wish I knew what their preseason wins, win total was. It was probably high 40s. You'd think, because last year they were like a six seed, and I think they had 47-something wins. And they were like right around 500 this year. But crazy stuff there in Minnesota. Uh, all right, next, we got... Um, we got bleed green to you going back to the Celtics. Looking back on the season because season's <laughs> over uh, for the Celtics, we're going to play the winner of the Heat Hawks game. What do you? How do you think the Celtics perform the season? Like coming into the season, they were title. Do you think they underperformed, overperformed, or what was your thoughts on the Celtics season in general? Uh, I think they. I gave it an an A minus. Okay, I like this grade. Okay. I think there was obviously every every team's gonna have their ups and downs no mm-hmm. matter how good you are unless you're the seventy three and nine Warriors That's although true. they did not win that tr- shit say, that year not a thing without but, the ring. Yeah, I I think that we managed well. I think we got some rest cl- close towards playoff time. Yeah, that, we're gonna have a week off now until Saturday. our first round series. It does suck how we have to wait to figure out who we're gonna have to play. Yeah, that, that is annoying. 
they did show us when they blew out Milwaukee in Milwaukee yeah. that they can win those games on the road. So I have the confidence in them. It's just a matter of them doing it. Listen, I think they, you know, performed as about, you know, at the level everyone thought. You know, they were an elite, one of the elite teams in the league. I think they finished with second or third best record in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, though, you know, for a long time, for most of the season, you know, through the All-Star break, they were by far the best record in the league. Yeah. And Milwaukee they went were. on a big win streak, and then Celtics kind of played like trash right out of the gate from the break. So if they do, do go in the Milwaukee game seven and they lose that game, it's a close game. You know, you can look back at this regular season and say the way they came out at a break, you know, is to blame for that. But I agree. I think I'd give it maybe B, B plus. I think they played well. Um, but with the team, with how far they've gone in the past, the runs they've had, these players been in the league a while now, it doesn't fucking mean a thing if they don't make noise in the playoffs. Like this season will be mean absolutely nothing if they lose in the second round to Philadelphia. This you know? Jalen injury is a little interesting. I was going to say, we'll talk about the um, – what do you make of that? He hurt his hand. He had to get five stitches because he picked up a vase. Yeah, I think, I think just that's a, that's a weird story. It's a weird story. He's probably fucking holding the bottle of wine and cut his hand on it somehow. I was going to say, I, either that or he fucking tried to punch Marcus Smart and missed. But a door. I, I don't know. I can't say that a, a stitch injury doesn't concern me because I've gotten stitches before. Yeah. And just once you get the stitches out, it's not like, oh, my hand's back to normal again, yeah. dude. Like, you it just got stitches. Your, your hand takes a little bit, so... It's on his shooting hand too. That doesn't oh, help. Jesus. So it's all we. Hopefully, maybe we put it a. It seems we'll be relying heavy in. on Tatum for this first round series. And honestly, they should whoever, even if they do play in Miami. Miami hasn't been good. Whoever they play, they should wax in I, five yeah, games. Yeah, I think if it's Miami or Atlanta, we should take care or of them. five games max. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to see how the seas do going into the playoffs. Um, since the season's over, we're gonna do some award predictions. Uh, what we think, who's gonna win each award? I'm um, obviously the big one is the most valuable player. We've talked about this all season long. Has anything changed for you, T, or is it still <laughs> Embiid for you? Yeah, honestly, I don't even have much to back him up anymore. I've, I've ridden with Embiid. I'm going to mm. still ride with him today. Yeah. I think Jokic has missed, like, the last, like, five of the last seven games anyways, so he's clearly taking his time to rest up, and mm. he's – not really caring about the award in the first place. I was going to say, I think it's, you know, it's going to be Embiid this year. Um, he's the betting favorite, like, by far. Yeah. Now, I'm happy I put some money on him earlier, <laughs> thanks to Best Bets. Um, Jokic, you know, he like you said, he could be, like, any other year. I don't think they'd give it to him three years in a row, though, you know? Yeah. And he missed a ton of time after, after um, the break. Nuggets faltered a little bit. Sixers played better. I think, if anything, fucking Giannis might deserve it more than Jokic. You yeah. know what I mean? I No, I agree. I actually do think Giannis deserves it more than Jokic. I was but say, I do think Embiid should win it. I was going to say, like, if you told me, like, Giannis, if you voter, voter, I'd say, yeah, absolutely, he could he could get in. It'd be well-deserved. But I agree with you. I think Embiid is our pick to win MVP. All right, next award, we got Rookie of the Year. I, another runaway. We will be quick with this one. It's got to be Paolo, right? Yeah, like this guy's a tank. Mm-hmm. He's just so good at. Obviously, he's really not a good jump shooter. I know he's because he's behind Westbrook shooting threes. So, yeah. but yeah, he's he's gonna control that team's future. Definitely. I was, I was gonna say like a lot of people didn't know if he was gonna be a number one pick last year, and if Orlando then took him, they'd be so. I mean, I bet they'd be pissed right now because he's even though Jabari uh, Smith, he has a lot of potential, but I feel like he's a little more raw than Paulo. Yeah, he needs you know, to build his body. He, he needs a couple more. years. And Chet, I mean, Chet, I feel like he's going to be one of these guys who's just never healthy, you know? Yeah, Chet really – do you know Poku on the Thunder? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just reminds me of him. Yeah. Of course, I, I talk about a Thunder teammate, but they're just, like, tall, stocky yeah. dudes that don't look like they can really move. I was going to say, you the way you watch Paolo play the season, you can tell he's going to he's, he's gonna good, he's gonna be a good player in this league for a while. So I think uh, I think we're all we all agree. Paulo Benchero, obvious choice, rookie of the year. Um, next award, coach of the year. Uh, I'm giving it to Mike Brown. I think he because the Kings stunk last year. They didn't make the playoffs. A lot of people thought they're going to stink this year. And he's got them playing really good basketball. Granted, they don't play a ton of defense, but who does in today's NBA? Uh, good turnaround. He's had a history as a good coach in other places, Cleveland. I'm going Mike Brown. T, what about you? Yeah, I can't, I can't disagree. He's been part of this mm-hmm. complete transformation of an NBA team. You know, yeah. J- 
making sure Sabonis and Fox gel too. That yeah. was his job. So that's huge. Part of mostly his job. So and like a lot, you could say like Budenholzer or like Malone, but like those teams were like have been good. Yeah, you know what I mean. So usually to give it to the coach, team was bad. He comes in, team's good. So I think yeah, we both agree. Mike Brown, coach of the year. All right, next award we got most improved player. Now this is a debate. I really think this award could go two different ways. It's really between Shea Gilgis, Alexander, and Laurie Marketing. Both had all star seasons. T I'd ask you, are you who do you think should win it between these two? Or do you have another guy you think should win? I I think it should be Shea. Okay. I ex- I think Shea should be on all NBA first team. So Dude, he really he's ha- he's been balling out this year, man. Like he's he dude, he reminds me of Harden. Wow. Like just the way he He's running the team himself right now. And they're pretty good. He kind of does it all. He does do it all. And I honestly, dude, for the whole season, I would say Laurie Marketing because last season he was kind of like I don't want to say he was like fading out of the league. Yeah, but he was kind of like becoming like a bench guy. He was a bench guy for Cleveland. And yeah. like, yeah, Chicago shoved him out Cleveland, so he really resurrected his career. But Shea, I think I agree. I'd give it a Shea. The only argument I could see for Laurie. Is that like Shea was like pretty good last year? Yeah, is is that Laurie had a larger yeah. improvement? Like Shea was good last year. This season he's just on another level, like might be all NBA first team all star. Laurie like kind of was fading out of league and like he had a complete resurrection. So I could see Laurie winning it in that aspect. But if you're talking to me like who played better this season and who's better, it's definitely Shea. Yeah, that's a tough tough award. That's honestly I could it's see a, that. I feel like way. that's the toughest award. Yeah. Because there's always like, like how do you judge people it? are always gonna improve. Like it's I just, feel you have to yeah, yeah, you have to project how long, how much you think they improved. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say Lori probably had the biggest gap from like bad to good, but Shea like was playing at a higher level. Yeah, so I guess it's it could go either way. I guess it's more how you look at it. But that award, uh, defensive play of the year, definitely we're not going with Rudy Obert, that soft Frenchman. Um, this this is between a couple of guys. Usually most are one two guys. This could go a number of ways. Brooke Lopez has been getting a lot of talk lately. Jaron Jackson has been a betting favorite also. Evan Mobley might get some, uh, some consideration T between these guys. Is anyone you favor? Uh, I'm taking Brooke. I, I okay. put some money on Brooke. Oh, so there you go. That might be why I'm yeah. riding with him. But uh-huh. I just think because the Bucks have the best record, mm-hmm. like that if Giannis isn't going to win MVP and mm-hmm. Budenholzer isn't going to win Coach of the Year, then someone on the team needs they to need win an award. something. Best record in the league. Yeah, my, my one knock on Jaron Jackson is because he's actually had to step up since Steven Adams and Brandon Clark are out. He's playing even more minutes for them. But he just gets in too much foul trouble. Yeah, he does get and in he, a lot of foul and he, trouble. And, he, and it causes him not to finish games. So if you're not on the court to help get stops, then that's, that's a fair th- argument. It'd be cool to see Brook Lopez when he's been in the league so long. man. He's a Nets all-time leading scorer. He's never been like seen as a defensive no. player either. He was more like a... Score, Low post, just assassin. And then he's completely changed his game in Milwaukee. Um, I personally, I would go Jaron Jackson. The only reason, I was going Brooke Lopez all year. The only reason I would disagree is because when Ja was out and Adams was out and Clark was out, I feel like he yeah, really stepped up. He did. So I feel he like has. So I feel like for that run, I'd give it to him. But, I mean, I think either of these guys are – more than deserving. I think Evan Mobley, like, in the cu- next couple years. Even he's, so, yeah, he's a very close he's second. Be, even his teammate, Jared Allen, I mean, those are two elite defenders yeah. down low. Yeah, so, they're, Cleveland's scary. Yeah, they get a good uh, young group there in Cleveland. I really like that Cavs team. I right, we get Defensive Player of the Year. Last award here, Sixth Man of the Year. You know, we got our hometown Celtic, Bleed Green, Malcolm <laughs> Brogdon. And also, to the left, Emmanuel Quickly, who's a bucket, who torched us. Who do you like for this uh, award, T? Uh... I th- I think similar to what I said with the Bucks, like if Giannis isn't going to win MVP and Budenholzer mm-hmm. isn't going to get Coach of the Year, that same with them. Uh, if, Tatum's not gonna, if Tatum's not going to win MVP yeah. and Joe Mazzulla is not going to win Coach of the Year, then I mean this guy. It's not like he doesn't have the numbers for it. No, he does. He's competing with quickly, and I think when you compare them, I think quickly is more inconsistent a gr- in the a sense percent. that he'll drop like forty one night, and then he'll have like only ten. But Brogdon, I feel like he's always just like Solid. basically Russ numbers, but actually efficient. Dude, like I don't a think, 15, 5, and 5. I don't think you could have said it better. You quickly would drop 40 to no of 10. Brogdon is so consistent. He's so solid. He's so smooth. He did it all. He didn't have these stretches. Like, he did it all year. He's on the better team, and he plays both ends. 
qu- they have to have quickly off the court because he's a liability on defense sometimes. I think his veteran presence has gone so unnoticed. Oh, he's us. been great, dude. Dude, he's like 32 now. Like he's played through. I, he might be a little bit younger. He's been in the league all while, and he's played in a bunch of series. You know, he yeah. played LeBron on the Pacers for yeah, people for multiple forget. years. You know, he's on the Bucks too when he was drafted by the Bucks in a lot of those playoff series versus Celtics. Yeah, and we're in high school. So this guy's been there, and he's he's looking for his first ring too. Yeah. So one rookie of the I'd give it a Brogdon, like you said, more consistent plays both ends, um, but quickly is also like a really fun player to watch too. I like the way he moves. Um, all right, that's it for the awards. Uh, for closing time, we have a fan question. Um, great fan of ours, Deep Sneakers. Deep Sneakers, thanks for watching. No video today, just a comment. Um, he asks, what are your guys' feelings about tanking? Do you think it's unsportsmanlike? Do you think it's strategic? And do you think it's okay at the end of the season or halfway through? Um, I'll just say for me, is it unsportsmanlike? I mean, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, I, it sucks because, you know, at the end of these seasons, you know, you, you watch these games, they're meaningless because teams are like, not that the players are trying to lose, but you bench your good guy. You know what I mean? You bench the good, like Dallas. Yeah. You bench your best players, so you set your team up to lose. It's definitely strategic. Um, that's why teams do it, to get a better draft uh, lottery odds. And I, I, I hate it, but I will say one thing the NBA has done that's great is the play-in tournament. I feel like it's really limited tanking. T, I don't know what you think about it. I think that tanking has enhanced our as has enhanced players' ability to load manage mm-hmm. because if the franchise just already has the mindset yeah, of I'm tanking. not trying to win a championship and that's just going to make a player like yeah. who's on the fence of playing not going to want to play even more. Mm-hmm. That's really my take on that. I think I think usually by post by All Star break, you, a team usually knows. Where they're going yeah, in the you season can or not, feel. so that's usually when I think people start taking tanking or not is all star break because that's when they make their yeah. moves. I think you got to make a decision by the trade deadline. You yeah. know, you're going to be a buyer or seller, and you can pretty much tell how your season's going. Yeah, you know, but I will say it is cool that the NBA did the playing tournament because I feel like a team like Toronto this year, like if it wasn't for a playing, they probably would have sold at the deadline. Yeah. But instead, they made some. They made a move. They got Pirtle, and they had a basketball season, and they're making it competitive. It's so funny I do, how they drafted him, and then they traded yeah, back for him. Yeah, he's he's okay. I mean, he's whatever. You know, he's Pirtle. It's like they must see something extra special yeah. in him if they wanted him back. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, they probably should have sold because, like, I feel like a bunch of their guys are maybe going to leave. But yeah, it's their decision. But at least they're not tanking, you know, to playing competitive basketball, so more games mean something, you know? Um, that's it for today. That's all we got. Thanks for sticking around for another episode of Sideline. Uh, remember, come every Wednesday at noon for our latest episode. Uh, the channel is completely viewer supported. So, you know, remember, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and we'll see you soon with our NBA playoff preview show. All right. That's it. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs>